Hello and welcome back to another Construct 3 3D tutorial. We just keep adding to the series here. And in today's video, we are going to set up these wood crates. And the significance behind that is that these actually work differently than the texture that we used for the walls, the grounds, our platforms, and even it works differently than these beams that we set up in the first video because we use the tile object to set up these textures and this one is not going to use tiling and I will show you why. If you are not subscribed to this channel yet, go ahead and hit that big red button. Make sure that bell is turned on and give this video a thumbs up while you're at it. That actually does help us content creators here on YouTube. And as always, I appreciate your support. All right, so I have the last project file that we completed in the last video, which was the Z axis scale. And we changed the dimensions of a lot of our objects so that they would fit the new scale. And just to clear this up, I will go ahead and make sure that our Z axis scale is set to regular. And if we come over to our input, click on our 3D camera object, we can see our Z scale is set to one. And that is what I'm going to work with in all future 3D projects in Construct 3 on this channel. So now that we got that out of the way, I am going to look at one of the textures we imported in the very first video of the 3D series. And I had them all sitting over here off to the side on our textures layer. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that. And then we have our dark blue rock wall the gold wall for our platform sides, this hex pattern, and then here's our beams. And one of the images we imported was the crate. Now, if I click to go into this, we just have the one image that is 32 by 32. We imported it along with the other images in a tiled background object. So that means if we spread it out, it does not stretch the image, it just tiles it that will create some issues if we want to make a wood crate or some kind of smaller object like that. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna unlock the platforms layer and I'm going to select both of these objects, which we have a 3D ground and 3D platform object. I'm going to control click and just drag out a copy. So now we have uh, two platforms here. Okay. I am going to click off to the side to unselect everything and I'm going to click on the top object and that brings up 3D ground. That's because in our Z order, our 3D ground is above our 3D platform, even though they're both on the same layer. So with just that one 3D ground object selected, I'm going to scroll down in the properties. We know that the front face object texture is the one that's facing us. Even though we're technically looking down in our 3D world, the front face of an object is the one that faces the camera or our perspective in the layout editor. So I'm gonna go in to that front face object over here in the properties, and I'm gonna change it from that rock dark texture to the wood crate texture. And you see what happens, it tiles it just like it should. Well, this is actually too big for a wood crate anyways, so I'm going to scroll back up to the top of the properties and I'm gonna change the size uh, 64 by 64. And now we have uh, two or actually four tiled crates, two across and two up and down. And then if we click the other platform object underneath the ground object, we can scroll down in its properties and we can change all these rock gold textures to crates. And then I'll scroll back up and change its size to 64 by 64. And if I play, let me expand that. Uh, we have a very strange situation here, right? And that definitely does not look right. And one thing is we changed the X and Y value of these two objects and not the Z height. So I'm gonna exit out of that and I am going to change the Z height of our 3D platform object. It's still selected here. So I'll scroll down to the Z height property. It is sitting at 45 and to match our X and Y of 64, I'm gonna change that to 64 as well. And that now puts the sides of the platform object above where our 3D ground object is. So I'll click on the 3D ground object. And then over here in the properties, I'm gonna change its Z elevation, not the Z height, but the Z elevation to 64. And then if I go back in, now 
uh, it didn't look very square in the preview. That's just because of the way the camera sees things in our layout editor. But in our 3D world, it is perfectly square or cube in this case. Now, if this is what you're going for, you have uh, eight crates stacked together, then that works. And because it's still the same object as this platform over here, we can jump up on it and run into it as a solid as well. But I just want it to be one big solid crate. So I'm gonna exit out of that and I want to change how this is done. I don't want it to tile, I want it just to be a plain image. So if we go over into our textures folder that we created in that first video, I have this tiled object called a uh, text wood crate. So with that highlighted, I'm just going to hit delete. It's going to ask me if I want to delete this because it's telling me that instances of it exist in the project and I'm aware of that and I don't want them to exist. So I'm going to go ahead and hit delete and it disappears from our project panel. It disappears from our textures layer and the image itself has disappeared from our object over here. And it's gone to its default texture or image, which if I click on this bottom piece, that is the 3D platform object. If I double click to go into it, this is why it is that color. We gave it a default color on each side. Same thing with the ground object. It is all browns. And then if we scroll down in the properties of one of these, you'll see that the front face no longer has a texture in it. Now this ground object has these texture rock blue tiled objects on it because that is what we used for the stairs objects. We used a copy of one of those to make our platform in that first video. Up here, those faces are not turned on, so they're not visible, they do not render at runtime. So we actually don't need these. With that 3D ground object on top selected, I'm gonna go through, click on clear selection and hit enter and do that for each one of these so that we clear them out and we can start fresh. And then if we click on the platform object below it, we can scroll down and we have this texture on the front face, but up here front face is not showing. So that doesn't get rendered either. Let's click on that, clear selection, hit enter, and now we can start new. So I'm gonna scroll out here, make sure our textures layer is unlocked and selected. And I'm going to double click in a blank space, scroll down and insert a sprite. And I'll click over here in this area. And I'm going to take that same texture from our textures folder that if you followed in the first video, there was a download available for that. That download is still available. I'll link that in the description below. But this is the exact same texture from that folder. And I have it open on another screen. I'm just going to click and drag the image itself onto our animations editor here and release and it placed and it also cropped it to the size of the image. So if I zoom in, we can check the size and it's set to 32 by 32 automatically. And then I'll just exit out of that. With that still selected, I'm gonna come up here and rename it. I'll rename it what we named the other one that we deleted, TEX underscore wood crate. So you see it's quite a bit smaller than uh, are examples of these other textures here. So now that we have that inserted into our project, I'm gonna come over here to projects panel, click and drag our new sprite into our textures folder, just for organizational purposes. And I'm gonna zoom into our box that we created here, and I'll click on this bottom platform object first, and then I'm gonna scroll down. All the faces are already checked for visibility for us, the left, right, top, and bottom. Those are the ones that are gonna show at runtime on all four sides. So left, right, top, bottom. I'll come down here, start with left, click that, get our wood crate texture, and do the same for these other faces. And that should do it. And then we can click on our top ground object and scroll down and we have the front face already selected for visibility. So let's go to the front face image and add the texture wood crate. And then we can play. And now we have a 64 by 64 wood crate. Okay, let's test a couple things out here. First, uh, I wanna show you that if we click on this platform object and we changed it to uh, 64 by 64, and we know our sprite image is 32 by 32. So this is actually blown up to twice its size. So if we did 32 
by 32. And we went in and played. You can see we forgot to, well, I forgot to change the Z height. So I'm going to scroll down and I'll change that to 32 as well. And then play. Okay, there we go. Now we can see what it would look like at its uh, normal resolution, 32 by 32. I went with 64 by 64 just because it uh, gave us a little bit bigger of an object. That looks like an awfully tiny little wooden crate. Okay, I'll exit out of that, put the Z height back to 64, and come back up here, and I'm gonna change our width back to 64, change the height to 64. I'm going to zoom out a little. I'm gonna select both of these, control click to drag out a copy, and then I'll drag out another copy. And then if we go in and play, now we have several wood crates and we can go in between them and around them, run into them, jump up on top of them, jump to each one. And I'll show you, you can even stack these. So I will control click, drag out another copy. This platform is at a Z elevation of zero and a Z height of 64. So if I want this one to be on top of that, I'll need to change my Z elevation to 64, and then I'll want to do the same thing with the 3D ground object. It already has a Z elevation of 64 because that's the top of the crate, so I would need to double that. That would be 128. And now, you can kind of see that there. I'm gonna get the position of one of these, any of these crates that are on the floor. I'm just gonna highlight that. Control C to copy. And then I will highlight both of these or select both of these and go into position and control V to paste. And then if we go in and play, now we have stacking crates and we can jump up on them just as we can these other ones. So that is just a very quick and easy way that we can change the look of our environment, but it also shows us that there's more than one way to texture our 3D shapes. Pretty straightforward process. Just wanted to make sure that you know you have the option to do something like this. Hopefully this helps your understanding of 3D in Construct 3 a little bit better. That's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. Hit that thumbs up. I always appreciate your support. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video. <laughs>